Ranger. Are you silver? A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Silver's leg hurt him again, Kimisari? No, Tunnel. Seems better today. His lameness has left him entirely. We've had a long ride, and I think the big fellow deserves a rest. We'll make camp here and get an early start in the morning. Gila River only two or three days away now. Silver and Scout both have vacation when we get there. <laughs> I think they know where we're going. Uh, them remember long green grass along banks of river. If we cross into the Badlands tomorrow, we'll need some supplies. There's a town up ahead called Whipsaw. While I set up camp here, I'd like you to go into town and buy what we need. Whipsaw? Uh, me hear of that town before. Trouble there not long ago. Outlaw named Bat Larson kill a man. Yes, Tano. Larson's been caught. He's in jail now, charged with murder. Uh, jail, good place for a man like Larson. An excellent place. I only hope there's no trouble at the trial. You think Larson's men may be trying to help him? That's always a danger. I'm probably worrying for no reason. At any rate, let's hope so. Maybe back soon, Kimisabe. Be careful, Tano. I'm all right. That dirty dry gulcher. I'd like to get my hands on him just once. Him try kill you? Yeah. You saved my life, Indian. What's your name? Me, Tonto. I'm Maud McKenzie. Folks calls me Mrs. Mack. Why him try kill you? Ever hear of Bat Larson? Uh, him renegade. Bat's in jail waiting trial for murder, and I'm witness to the killing. That answer your question? Uh. Anything special you like to eat? No. Why you ask? I run the restaurant. And from here on, anything you want's on the house. <laughs> now, come on, help me find my horse so as we can report this to Sheriff Cooper. One of Larson's men tried to kill me. What? The varmint ambushed me. If Tondo here hadn't come along, your star witness would be pushing up cactus. That dirty coyote, I'll fix him. Now, hold on, Bill. You can't beat up on your own prisoner. I suppose not. Are you uh, sure it was one of Larson's men? Who else has a reason for wanting to kill me? The food in my cafe is not that bad. I'd better organize a posse. But the Larson out to murder me, you'd do better giving me a guard. I got trouble enough guarding him. Wait a minute. Mrs. Mack, you and me are going over and see Judge Jordan. What for? We'll get you a lawyer, and we'll find Larson's lawyer and go in that cell, and you can make out a written deposition that'll be used at the trial, just in case anything happens to you. In case anything happens? With that deposition available for evidence, why, killing you wouldn't do Larson any good. Matt, do you mind watching the office for me? Oh, no, not if you'll stop by the store and tell my assistant where I am. Thanks. Let's go, Mrs. Mack. Come on, Tonto. Matt, 
Did you tell the boys to ambush Mrs. Mack? Sure, I did. You crazy fool. If they killed her, you'd have been lynched. I hadn't thought of that. Well, let me do the thinking. I sent a telegram to her brother that'll bring results. You and your fancy plans. You got the keys, why don't you just turn me loose? Because as a fugitive, you wouldn't be much use as a partner. At least I'd be alive. Well, you better hope Mrs. Mack stays that way. She's preparing a sworn statement that can be used at the trial. What? Relax. When she gets on the witness stand, she'll retract every word of that statement. And she'll refuse to testify against you. You'll walk out of that court a free man. After saying goodbye to Mrs. Mack and purchasing supplies, Tonto lost no time in returning to camp to tell the Lone Ranger what had happened. Having Mrs. Mack make that deposition is a clever move, but I think it'll force Larson into more desperate measures. Maybe gang raid jail. They might. I'm sure they won't give up their leader without some kind of a fight. Larson, plenty smart outlaw. That's what puzzles me, Tonto. Four years ago, Larson was just an ordinary gunslinger. Now he's a highly successful outlaw leader. Sometimes smart men act like fools to throw enemy off guard. Yeah, that could be the answer. Anyway, tomorrow we'll try to make sure that nothing interferes with Larson's trial and the jury's verdict. You think gang threatened jury? Maybe. But there'll never be any respect for law and justice in the West if criminals are allowed to intimidate witnesses and juries are prevented from performing their duties. That night at the telegraph office in Whipsaw, Frankie, the relief operator, received a message addressed to Mrs. Mack from her brother Silas. Telegram came. Driving from Stillwater, arrived tomorrow. Love, Silas. When you get off duty, get hold of Kelso. In the morning, you two are going to stage an ambush. Here comes a wagon now. Silas Hartwell. Oh, yes. How did you know Shut that? Shut up. I'm going to take you to the boss. But, 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 gentlemen, I assure you, I have virtually no money. We don't like... want your money. Now, let's just be frank here. Yeah. No. I'll get a rope and tie him up. Shut up. I'll give you... Let's go, Tunnel. Sir? More bandits. We're not bandits. I work for the law even though I wear this mask. You know, this is most peculiar. First bandits who didn't want any money, and now a policeman who wears a mask. They didn't want any money? No, it was amazing. I've never been west of St. Louis in my life. But these hoodlums addressed me to Silas Hartwell and said their boss wanted to see me. We go after bandits, Kimisami? First, let's find out why they wanted Mr. Hartwell. Do you know anyone living in this vicinity? My sister. I received a telegram stating that she was ill. So ill, in fact, that I rented this wagon in Stillwater and came on without waiting for my stage connection. What's your sister's name? Maud McKenzie. She's the proprietor of the restaurant. Mrs. Mack. Her not sick. Somebody make a mistake. Maybe it isn't a mistake. Did you get him? We got him all right. We're tying him up when a masked man and an engine showed up. Masked man? Well, he shot the gun right out of my hand. There was nothing we could do but clear out. Oh, you fools. When Hartwell talks to his sister, he'll find out that telegram we sent was a fake. And they'll wonder why Hartwell's answer wasn't delivered. They'll come asking me about it. 
What will I tell him? Oh, Mrs. Mack doesn't know anything about telegrams. Chances are Hartwell doesn't either. You can fake some kind of an answer. It's awful risky. It'll be worth the risk if we can get our hands on Hartwell. Now get out of here before somebody sees you. <laughs> My goodness, why didn't you let me know you were coming? Well, I sent you a telegram from Stillwater in answer to yours. I didn't get any telegram. I didn't send any either. You mean to say you haven't been ill? Ill? Of course not. <laughs> That's just what I suspected. Mercy on us. Uh, hold up. I'm sorry if I startled you, Mr. McKenzie, but I'm no bandit. Then what are you? He's our friend and he's here to help us. I'm not sure, but I think the telegram your brother received was sent by Larson's men. What makes you say that? Well, it looks as though they plan to capture Mr. Hartwell and use him to make you change your testimony. Of all the low-down tricks. But a clever trick. Too clever for Bat Larson. Him, leader of gang. Well, I don't think so, Tano. Those men said they wanted to take Mr. Hartwell to the boss. They couldn't have met Larson because he's in jail. Then somebody else is back of this? Exactly. I'll go right down to that telegraph office and find out who sent that fake telegram. I'd rather you didn't just yet, Mrs. Mack. Why not? I'll explain after you and your brother report this new ambush attack to the sheriff. Oh, whatever you say, sir. Come along, Maud. Sounds like Mrs. Mack have a good idea. Telegraph operator keep record of all wires. Then they may be able to remember who sent fake telegram to brother of Mrs. Mack. He probably would be able to remember, but I don't think he'd admit it. You suspect him work for Larson, too? There's a very good chance of it. Why do you think that? Now, this is a small town, Tom. Everybody in Whipsaw must be well acquainted with Mrs. Mack. The operator must have known she wasn't ill, and yet... Me understand. Yet him send fake message anyway. That's right. But it'd be hard to prove operator Cook him, Sammy. Yes, Donald would. I think I'll let the operator trap himself, as well as the men who work for Larson. What's your plan? When Mrs. Mack comes back, I'll ask her to go to the telegraph office and register a routine complaint, and then pretend to be satisfied with whatever explanation is offered. Then she'll send the telegram. That evening, following the Lone Ranger's instructions, Mrs. Mack went to the telegraph office. Hal Judson, the regular operator, had just gone off duty. Take a look at this, Frankie. What is it? It's a phony telegram sent from here three weeks ago. Know anything about it? Well, no, I don't, Miss Mack. Well, this was sent from Stillwater. What? Yeah, see these numbers here in the corner? Each office along the line has a different set. Uh, those mean that uh, this particular message originated in Stillwater. Well, maybe so, but how come I didn't get the answers from my brother? Well, if he sent them, you should have received them, but I don't remember getting anything for you lately. All I can say is if I ran my restaurant the way you people run your telegraph service, a lot of folks would starve to death. I'm oh, sorry, Ms. Mack. Well, see if you can send this one, not get it lost. Atkins, Wesson, Stage Line, Stillwater, Arizona. Please reserve space for Silas Hartwell and tomorrow's eastbound stage, Maud McKenzie. Well, that'll be uh, 85 cents. All right. Now, you see that that one gets there. Don't worry, Miss Mack. Couple of cigars, Mr. Block. Hey. What's up? Hartwell's taking the eastbound stage out of Stillwater tomorrow. When you get off, meet Kelso and me here. Hey, Art. Good night, Mr. Block. Good night. Leave telegraph operator go to buy cigars. Me think him whisper to man who runs store, but me not able to hear anything. I suspected he'd pass the information along to someone. Signs say store belonged to a man named Matthew Block. 
You think him the one we're after? It looks that way. But until we get proof, we'll keep our suspicions to ourselves. Mm, much talk without proof made plenty of bad medicine. So we'll concentrate on getting that proof. Let's tell Mrs. Mack and Mr. Hartwell the rest of our plan. Canvas? It's in the back of the wagon. Uh, Silas, are you sure you want to go through with this? Oh, now, Maude. Don't worry, Mrs. Mack. We'll see that he's protected. I know you will. And when you get back, I'll have a dinner waiting for you, the like of which you never set peace into. Oh, well, that's a promise. <laughs> You'd better get started. We'll meet you on the other side of town. All right. Come along, Maude. Let's go, Tom. He's getting ready to leave now. Yeah, and traveling alone. It's just about perfect. Now, you take care of yourself, Silas. Oh, stop worrying, Maud. Uh. Come on. Keep going. Bye. Don't forget to ride. Get after him. But be careful. Wiggly's well out of town. Don't worry, boss. We'll get him this time. Good morning. You're in early. Yeah. You still have those tins of uh, extra fancy sardines? I certainly do. I want two of them. And some cherries and uh, some olives. Silas just loves olives. What did you say? I said olives. I'm having kind of a celebration dinner for Silas tonight, and I want all the trimmings. But, but I thought... Anything wrong? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Mack. I, I just remembered some business I have to attend to. Uh, Eddie will take care of you. Oh, all right. I'll give him the rest of my order. When Mrs. Mack mentioned the celebration dinner, Block realized that Silas was returning in the evening and, suspecting a trap, rode out of town to warn Kelso and Frankie. Here he comes. Ready. Whoa! Get your hands up. Got those guns. Magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Take off those masks. This one, telegraph operator, Kimisabi. Me not know this one. Mr. Hartwell, hand me that rope. What are you going to do to us? I'm going to tie you up. Then you're going to answer a few questions. All right, which one of you will do the talking? Say. You have a great deal to say. Who told you to ambush Mr. Hartwell? Was it Matthew Block? I'm waiting for an answer. Me know how make him talk, Kim Zemi. You're not going to torture him. It's an idea. Wait a minute. I'll talk if you promise things will go easy for me. Don't move, any of you. All right, mass man, drop your gun. You too, engine. Matt, this yellow-livered skunk was going to squeal. Yeah, I know. Looks like you fell into your own trap, mister. The law will catch up with you eventually. You'll never seize the day. All right, on time, and no tricks. Not him, the other one. What's the idea? 
You're going to stay like that for a while. He plans to murder you, too, Frankie. Well, you're loco. Isn't he, Matt? Somebody's got to take the blame for killing these two. Yeah, it'll be like a three-way gunfight with no survivors. No! <laughs> Nice work, Tunnel. Take care of Frankie's wound. Then we'll tie them and take them into town. Well, Sheriff, now that Frankie has made a full confession, I don't think you'll have any more trouble from the so-called Larson gang. Did I knock me over with a pin feather when Matt Block turned out to be the real leader? Goodbye, Mrs. Mack. I'm sorry we can't stay for that celebration dinner. But Tano and I have to be on our way. Don't mention that dinner. I almost ruined your whole plan. Block and his men being caught is the important thing. Goodbye, sir. Thanks for all you did. The West needs more men of your courage. Oh, you overwhelm me, sir. I wish you could stay. We'll be back again soon. Adios. Now there's what I call a real man. Ah, I wish I were 30 years younger. Maud, you don't even know who he is. Do you? Well, certainly. I may be just a tenderfoot Eastern, but I know the most famous man in the West when I see him. He's the Lone Ranger. I don't see